Hi guys, today I'm making this video because I'll be honest, sometimes I really, really hate when I see people make these videos and the people making these videos are like 12 year old girls like just graduated from riding lessons, just bought a brand new saddle, knows all about riding horses, makes how to groom your horse videos. Okay, people, if you're seriously looking into buying a horse, the people you need to take advice from are people who have actually owned horses, had them on their property, um, trained horses, worked with all kinds of horses, owned horses for years, not little 12 year old girls that have like $500 riding boots and a brand new whatever freaking brand saddle I don't I don't even know English brands but the people you need to take advice from and ask questions are people who are completely educated and experienced with owning horses several horses um, that have owned horses for a long time and really know what they're doing that can give you quality advice so if you don't already know I own three horses right now I have owned soccer and sugar for around 10 years now and I have owned a BB. I had Luna in the past and I've worked with a lot of horses. So, I mean, I feel pretty confident in my advice that I'm going to give. If you have any other advice, feel free to leave it in the comments for anyone that wants to watch this video. But the first thing um, that I feel like you need to know before buying a horse is that horses are expensive. Okay, this may seem like a no-brainer, completely obvious question, but if you're used to just leasing a horse, um, just taking lessons and riding horses, you may not understand how freaking expensive horses are, okay? They're very expensive. If you are going to buy a horse, completely support it yourself. You need to be prepared for board if you're going to board your horse somewhere. Typically, where I'm from, board is between 150 to 300 a month. Now, it can depend, depending on where you live. If you live in a state like Colorado, Colorado is a very expensive state to live in. Um, things might be higher, things might be lower, depending on where you live. So you need to be prepared for board. Um, if you find a good facility that you like, ask questions and ask how much board would be. Um, so you can look around at different places, but you're going to be paying for board. Vet bills are very expensive. Um, you can get your vaccines done twice a year, once a year. I do mine once a year, but even then it's still expensive um, for three horses especially. There's hoof care. If you are going to pay a farrier to trim your hooves or to shoe your horse, if that's what you want, then those things are going to be very, very expensive. All of your equipment, in case equipment breaks and you need to buy new stuff, all of the things that you are going to have to pay for that all add up with horses, they turn out to be very expensive animals and you need to be completely aware of that before um, purchasing one and being knowledgeable about everything that you're going to have to pay for. Number two, herd behavior. Oh my God, I love this one because it drives me insane whenever I see new horse owners, even horse owners that have had horses all their lives. Believe me, I used to work at a place and this woman owned horses her whole life and she was in her 50s and even then, she still had no freaking clue how herd behavior works and it drove me nuts every time she would yell at the horses for biting each other or kicking each other um they would you know they wouldn't punish them and it, it was just a big mess so please go research videos go watch a bunch of things um documentaries on how herd behavior works so you know what your horse is getting into you know what you're putting your horse into horses are herd animals. They will interact with each other. They'll bite each other, kick each other. There's gonna be a pecking order. Your horse may not be the highest one in the herd. That's all right. Horses work with each other. They communicate all the time and it's okay for them to bite and kick each other. That's just what they do. That's horses being horses. Go to Rick Gore's channel, Think Like a Horse. He has tons of videos on herd behavior and stallions and mares and foals interacting with each other all the time. and. It's, it's, he's got really good videos, so if you're not really up to date on herd behavior, go check out some of his videos. 
they're great. It's something that every horse owner should know, but far few know than they actually should. So go along with herd behavior. You need to know that horses get hurt. It is a natural thing, okay? Horses get injured. People get injured. We sprain muscles, we roll an ankle, we trip and fall sometimes. Horses are the same way. If your horse gets hurt, it doesn't mean another horse is super aggressive and attack is, is attacking him, is trying to kill him or anything. Horses kick each other, they get bruises. Horses bite each other, they will get skin marks. I came out to the pasture one day and BB literally had imprinted teeth marks in her neck because one of the other horses had bit her and just scraped all the hair off of her neck. And it was actually kind of funny um, because it was the exact teeth marks. But horses do that kind of stuff. They're gonna get, you know, they may go lame sometimes. Um, they get sore after trimming hooves. Um, you know, horses get hurt. Horses are accident prone, especially if you have a young, curious horse. They do that kind of stuff. It's normal. It's, it's not the end of the world if your horse gets hurt. Now, this one I say, but even though I say it, there are still so many people who ride horses that don't understand the value of hard work. Horses are hard work, especially if you are going to pay for your horse all yourself. You're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to probably get a job, earn money. Your parents aren't going to pay for all of it your whole life. Um, you need to understand the value of hard work. I come from a family farm. We bale and stack all of our own hay, and we had 13 acres of hay field last year, so we had loads and loads and loads of hay all the time three to four cuttings a year, and it is a lot of work. <laughs> Stacking, unstacking, loading, bailing, it's all a lot of hard work. Um, horses in general, they're hard work. You have to inspect their hay, you have to clean their water. Um, cleaning stalls, I clean stalls as my job right now, and it sucks ass, but those horses need clean stalls. So horses will are hard, and they are hard work. Sorry, I cannot talk today. They are hard work and you should understand that before purchasing one and even though a lot of people don't these days, that's why a lot of horses get resold because they're too much work. They take too much time. I don't have the time for my horses. I don't have the money. You need to know that stuff before buying one and spare that horse that you're looking at another home and another move if you're just going to sell it again because it's too much work. You need to know necessary health requirements for a horse. What are you gonna be doing with your horse? It may be something to think about. Does your horse need super high quality alfalfa first cutting hay, or not first cutting, third cutting hay. First cutting is usually not as good, but um, does your horse need just plain old grass hay? I mean, if you're getting a pony or miniature horse, what kind of hay is that horse going to be able to eat? What kind of nutrients are they going to need? What kind of salt blocks are you going to have to get? Um, what kind of vaccines do you need? If you're getting an old horse, what um, necessary health requirements is that horse going to need to maintain a healthy lifestyle? All those things you need to think about, you need to research, read up um, in books, on the internet, whatever, about horses and all the necessary things that they need because a lot of girls that just take lessons and don't actually own the horses and have to worry about their worming and their vet checkups and their vaccines. They don't really know a lot about the health of a horse and what horses need to maintain um, a healthy digestive system and respiratory system and all of those things. So you should really know that and look it up before buying a horse so you don't risk your horse's health or make any mistakes. People make mistakes all the time. It's not the end of the world, but just maybe to prevent, you know, some mistakes, look it up first and that way you're good to go. Along with the health requirements, you need to know your, your horse's health risks. Horses can colic. You need to know about colicking, foundering, um, all those kind of things. In all the different types of colic, there's mold colic, dust, um, impaction colic, sand, all kinds of different junk that goes on in horse's health and choke if your horse gets choke um, you just need to know all the really I say the major health concerns that your horse could get or could get from other horses there are major horse herpes viruses going around right now my friend actually has a horse that has one eye because her horse got herpes 
in her eye and had to have it removed. And there are tons of horses um, going around with the rhinovirus right now. So you should know about those things before purchasing your horse. This one is, is not super important, but you should know and be able to recognize um, good hay and pasture quality. Hay quality is pretty important. I value the quality of my horse's hay. Um, I don't want to buy anything moldy or full of weeds, stuff like that. Um, it may be really cheap hay, but is it good hay? Um, horses don't need, at least in my opinion, horses don't need some fancy um, like $6 a bale hay. I mean, guys, really horses are built to live off grass. Grass hay is good enough for your horse. Um, I always stick with grass hay, but some people, if they have show horses or performance horses, will go with alfalfa. You just need to look for those types of things in, in hay quality. Um, if your hay is really dusty, if you notice your horse coughing a lot, that may be why it's just not very nice hay. Pasture quality is pretty important to me, especially if you're going to board somewhere. You want your horse to have a decent quality pasture if that's where they're going to be living. Living. Um, I'm pretty against stalls, so I feel like your horse should be on pasture, so you should value the quality of your horse's pasture and the value quality of their life in the pasture. So I might make a separate video just about pasture quality, so stay tuned for that. Um, but that's always something you should look at. Know your horse's breed is so important. If there's a certain horse that you're looking at, you need to recognize the horse's breed and recognize what those breeds are capable of. I mean, most horses, any horses, are capable of doing things like trail riding, just pleasure riding, doing some fun shows, stuff like that. But if you're looking at doing like extensive jumping and fox hunting, maybe cross country, stuff like that, you're probably not really gonna go for like a draft cross or um, like a percheron or something like that. Probably not going to be the best for that job. So if you're focusing on a certain area of riding such as cross country or show jumping, you might wanna go for something like a thoroughbred or an Arabian that is more agile and built for certain jobs, if you know what I mean. Um, I have quarter horses. And a lot of people do jump quarter horses. I, I know people that have jumped their quarter horses before, but some quarter horses are built for that and some are not. Soccer has very large joints. Um, his joints crack sometimes because of a little bit of arthritis. He's a very stocky, large built horse and jumping him would probably not really be the best on his joints just in particular because soccer is soccer and other horses um, are good for other things. But that's just something you need to know is, is this breed of horse gonna be good for what I want to do or should I look at other breeds? Research them, know what they're capable of so you don't set your horse up to fail. All right guys, so that's all my tips on what you need to know before you purchase your personal horse. Um, I know this may have been a little boring. I do talk a lot sometimes when I get into things like this, but that's personally what I think you should know and the advice I can give. If you have any other advice, feel free to leave it in the comments for other people if you have owned your own horses and anything like that. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.